so much for being here today. And to our listeners, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm so happy to have you on here as a guest. I'm happy to be here. I am honored. I've watched you perform, your story. You're truly an inspiration. Um, And I really, really, one of the things I really like about you, actually, since we're going to get right into it, your Instagram, the videos that you make on there, I feel like they're so vulnerable, so real, so authentic. And on top of that, I feel like you live that message. Just in case you don't feel that all the time, know that I think that. Thank you. I try. (laughs) So thank you for being on here. Uh, Let's get right into it. So you're an actor. I'm an actor. Have you always (laughs) been an actor? Uh, Yeah, ever since I saw Peter Pan. Yeah. uh, In like the fifth grade. I I think that's what I said I was going to do. I think it's evolved. So I'm a storyteller. Mm -hmm. but, But acting is... It brings me a ton of joy. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So you're from New York. I'm from New Dominican. York. Dominican. Dominican from New York. Hello, everyone. Hi. Um, and so did you did you study right out of high school? Like this, I'm going to study. I studied after. in high school. Okay. I did like the whole fame school thing. Where did so you go? I went to Talent Unlimited. We like to call it TU because Talent Unlimited sounds weird. <laughs> you know. Um, where's, where's Talent Unlimited? It's on 68th Street between 1st and 2nd. So okay. it's the old Julia Richmond complex, which back in the day had this crazy fire okay. it was like a, a very famous fire that this whole high school burnt down, burnt down. Mm-hmm. Um, so then they turned it into six specialized high schools including a performing arts high school okay. so that's where I went okay so you did that in high school then. I did and how was that experience for you uh, you guys performed plays and stuff like that the whole thing plays dance classes movement classes uh, auditioning they taught you all of that? They taught us that's all that. Amazing. They tried. They tried. They did their best. <laughs> I mean, there's colleges that don't teach you that. So that's yeah. amazing that you started so young. Um, how was that for, you know, I have a guest on. She's a celebrity hairstylist and she come, she's Dominican too. And immigrant parents and the idea of having a child as an artist. You know, how was that for you? How how was your family when, when they saw like, okay, this is what Chris wants to do. Were they supportive or... Where, did they try to tell you, like, go do something more secure? How was that? I always feel extremely blessed because my parents didn't know what they were doing. <laughs> uh, and because my parents didn't know what they were doing, it, it, it caused them to, um, they couldn't really say no. Mm. Because their parents constantly said no to them. And their parents didn't really help them. And so my parents made one commitment. And that commitment was like, we're going to give our kids everything we never had. And for them, the most basic was, like, not worrying about where our food came from. Right. And then after that, it was just, like, don't say no. Unless he wants to, like, murder somebody, like, right. let's let our kids smile. Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. um, I don't. I just don't think they had the language to want me to be a doctor. Because who's a doctor in my family? Like, I don't think they had the language t- mm-hmm. t- to to say, no, no, that's, that's a silly pipe dream. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they were happy enough that I was smiling. Mm-hmm. Um, and they didn't smile as much as kids, you know, mm-hmm. uh, when they were kids. So, so I got lucky. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So were your parents or are they a source of inspiration for you now for your art and how you tell your stories and how yeah, you a live? Too, a little too much. So, <laughs> uh, my dad comes up in a lot of my work as okay. a storyteller, as a writer, as a mm-hmm. creator. Um, mm-hmm. I find a lot of inspiration in him. He's like, a, mm-hmm. he's got mad wisdom with a hammer, you know, um, right. He ain't soft about it. Mm -hmm, Uh, He's mm -hmm. pretty hardcore. Um, And I don't even know if he knows it's wisdom sometimes. Mm -hmm. But I see that. Um, And then my mother, I got all of her uh, emotional intelligence. Right. And so that allows me to be as good and receptive as I think I am. Mm -hmm. Um, Because she feels like a little too much sometimes. yeah is she like empathetic she's or? very empathetic to the mm. point of sorry ma uh to, <laughs> sorry. The, to the point where it uh it causes a lot of suffering you mm. know because empathy is beautiful but but how do we feel it and not take it in right and that's what we are discovering yeah right like our parents didn't really understand that there's a lot of things that we are bringing to them based on what we learn and consciousness and all of that that we're going to cover because I think you're an excellent person to have this conversation with. But speaking of our parents, for me, being Dominican, I think that we grow up seeing storytellers in the most original Mm -hmm. form, right? Like our families, we can never say, oh, this happened to me the other day I went here and that was it. 
No, it's like, so let me tell you. So I was walking and like, it's just, we carry this embodiment of wanting everyone to listen, of sharing it and having everyone feel it. So for me, it, it has inspired me a lot. Is that something that you can relate to? Yeah, 100%. Right? 100%. You know, uh, beautiful brown people are beautifully brown in expressiveness. Yes. <laughs> like, yeah. they're, uh, they're just, yeah. they're, um, yeah, maybe that's, maybe that's a dad thing, right? My pops is, is big. Mm -hmm. I saw him. I yeah. Play. He's loud. He's mm -hmm. big. He's abrasive. <laughs> he's, <laughs> yes. Um, but he's not boring. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think we, I mean, we yeah. might have boring family members. Sorry, guys. But most of our culture is so colorful yeah. and it's so expressive and it's so inviting that even like our conversations are like so yeah. up there on the dramatic scale. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mad drama. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So talking about our culture, you wrote The Real James Bond is Dominican. Yeah. That's how we met. I was introduced to you through your cousin, Edwin. And... There's so much I can say about that play. And I told you that day, like, uh, what I thought about it. And I cannot wait to see where it goes. But where do we start with that? What was your inspiration to say, I want to tell this story? The inspiration was, um, it's in the show. I mean, an article was sent to me mm -hmm. um, by a... Uh, my homie Peter Jensen. Huh, shout out to Peter. I haven't spoken Hi, to him Peter. in a minute. Uh, <laughs> and and Peter sent me this article. He said, "Yo, I, I think you would. I think you would dig this." Um, and it it like cracked my world open. Mm -hmm. This this man, this twice the richest man in the world, this uh, the greatest living playboy. You know, which mm -hmm. is the part that interests me the least. This um, best friends with kings and queens and presidents and followed by the fbi for 17 years and then the alleged political is sad like this this man of color this dominican man mm -hmm. who no one knows who he is mm -hmm. you know porfirio rubirosa he just kind of uh vanished and and i needed to know why mm -hmm. um it is it is like you know uh we can get, we can take it there it's like i was vi i was visited and mm -hmm. um and i was given an assignment that mm -hmm. said that said tell my story and and I tell it uh, because it also scares me, you know, because you saw the show, but um, I don't want to, I, I see a lot of warnings um, about what it means to sell yourself and what it means to fit yes. in and what it means to be seen. Um, and as someone who's in the business of being seen, um, I am tempted often to change myself to be seen. Mm. Um, and Ch you can only do that so many times. That was a big part of yeah. what I felt in, um, in your play. It was very impactful to to realize that that's what we're doing. We're changing ourselves to be seen. People don't consciously know that they're altering a little bit so they can like fit this mold. So you felt called. You felt like this is your story to tell for us, right? Yeah, it's my story to explore and to tell. Yeah. Right. And you did a great job. Yeah, it's still happening. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So what are if you can touch on one thing though? Um, that you talked about about our culture right it's yeah. so layered guys and it would be <laughs> an entire episode on just that yeah. uh, but what is something you can say that you would like someone to take away from there uh a takeaway is that oftentimes uh this image this mold um this mold wasn't created by us for us mm -hmm. And we hold ourselves to that place. So as a little kid, I watched a lot of people who didn't look like me. Mm -hmm. um, being, I think everyone wants to be seen. Mm -hmm. And everyone wants to be heard. And everyone has that right. And everyone should be seen and heard and should know that they take up space and time.